This is Communicators in a Cart. Dr. Oh, Skidmore. hi, Chris. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? Good. Nice to see you. What Good. are you up to? It's a busy month. It's Women's History Month. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Do you have time to talk about it? I do, yeah. All right, let's go. Great. So how long have you been at Tech? I started here in the fall of 2011. So tell me about your research. You're in the Department of History. I am. I'm a historian. Um, so my area of specialization, I do uh, U.S. women and gender history, um, and I teach classes on, on those topics. So Emily, tell me a little bit about your background. Uh, I know you're from the East Coast, and mm -hmm. how do you get from the East Coast to Lubbock, Texas? Yeah, so I grew up in Connecticut, um, and then I went to college over in Minnesota. I went to St. Paul, uh, went to McAllister College in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, I stayed there for a year uh, after I graduated, and then I went to graduate school at the University of Illinois. What was that moment where you decided to uh, study women's history and gender issues? Yeah, so I was interested in history of women and gender and sexuality as an undergraduate, um, but what I became most interested in as an undergraduate was actually labor history. So when I applied to graduate school, I applied to actually work as a labor historian. My advisor was a labor historian. Um, and then very quickly that first semester, I came to realize that uh, the field of history more broadly didn't think about women's history as being important. Right. Um, and so I began to think of it as something that important for me to do um, in my own project since there was so much that we didn't yet know about women's history. That's part of how I wanted to contribute to the field was thinking, of, thinking and writing about histories of women and histories of gender and sexuality. Well, there's so many moments I think throughout history that um, kind of these pivotal or key moments. Yeah. But let's jump uh, jump forward to the, the 2016 election and mm -hmm. then this election mm -hmm. period and the female candidates mm -hmm. uh, that we had. Do, you, do When you look at that, do you mm -hmm. look at that as finally or it's taken too long, this should have been done a long time ago or mm -hmm. we're here, how do we build on this? How do you, how do you view that mm -hmm. and is there, do you view that with a level of um, okay, this is great, uh -huh. what do we do now, yeah. our, our disappointment, how do you look at that? Yeah, I think the activists who got the um, 19th Amendment passed, uh, they would have, I think they would have been deeply disappointed that, you know, 100 years in the future we still wouldn't have uh, a woman president, you know, to move from, if we think about the Democratic primary, to move from the most diverse field we've ever had to, um, to white men, I think, uh, you know, of course, it's so hard to assume that we know what people in the past might think about our current moment, but I think there probably would be disappointment that still, we're, here we are in 2020, a hundred years after women have gotten the right to vote, and yet things, you know. So looking at that, um, it, we're at the 100th anniversary mm -hmm. of the 19th Amendment. Yeah. Uh, 50 years prior mm -hmm. to that, I think it was the Wyoming Territory yes. at the time, we, yeah. we talked about this a little bit earlier, yeah. um, where they, women were granted the right to vote and run for office. Yes. So there's a 50 year window yes. that happens before that ratification mm -hmm. and a hundred years since. Mm -hmm. Has the progress, is the progress at a faster pace mm -hmm. or, and you just talked about the disappointment yeah. potentially, but is, is the progress faster though? Or are we looking mm -hmm. at a lot of one off moments still? Yeah, I think, so it's interesting you mentioned that Western states, Western territories were often at the forefront of giving women the right to vote. Um, and that can be explained for two reasons. One, it was a strategy for women that were active in um, the suffrage movement. There was actually a split in uh, how they thought the best approach would be. There were some folks that thought that the best thing we could do, the fastest way to do it would be to pass a national amendment. Then there were other folks that thought no, 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 we should go state by state. Um, and so there were activists that would go to the Western territories and fight to change the laws there. But also strategically, in those Western territories, they thought they were aware that there was a great um, dis imbalance of um, the gender ratio there. There were far more men in those territories than women. And they thought, 
oh, if we give women the right to vote, then maybe more women will be uh, drawn to those t Western territories. Um, but you're right, so 50 years between when Wyoming passed the right to vote to when the 19th Amendment was ratified, that was 50 years of struggle and of, um, and of hard work. Um, and in, you know, 2020 is remembered as the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment. But what's important to note is that uh, when the 19th Amendment was ratified, it was really only white women that were given the right to vote. Because if you were an African-American woman in the South, you were still barred from voting. Um, and it wouldn't be until 1965 with the Voting Rights Act that you were able to actually enjoy the franchise, you know, uh, and benefit from it. Um, so change is slow. <laughs> change has been slow. And I think it continues to be slow. But do you think that that moment in 1920, was mm -hmm. that a, obviously a pivotal moment for mm -hmm. voting and yeah. for, for those rights, but did it, did it spark change in other areas? Mm. Was that kind of an impetus for that? I think for a lot of women, uh, the goal, the, the whole women's movement had been very narrowly focused on the right to vote. And then once that right was achieved, a lot of women backed off of politics um, because they had, they had won, right? They had gotten the thing they would fought so for so many generations for. Um, and so we do see um, sort, of a, a, sort of a dissipation of, of, of activism that really doesn't kick back up again until the 60s and the, the women's rights movement of the mid 20th century. When was the, because, because we did have in this uh, presidential election, mm -hmm. or uh, especially on the Democratic side, the female mm -hmm. candidates, and, yeah. and I thought, um, what was the first, who was the first uh. female <laughs> candidate? And I was surprised to go back to the 1870s. Yes, yeah. And yeah. Uh, Woodhill? Victoria Wood Woodhull, Victoria yeah, Woodhull. Victoria Woodhull. And, but I was, it, was, it was really fascinating to see that and her running partner was Frederick Douglass. Uh -huh, yes. And they ran against Ulysses S. Grant. Yeah. So um, uh, it's yeah. just interesting to see how far back that goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Victoria Woodhull is just a fascinating character. Uh, she, um, yeah, she, it's funny. So she named Frederick Douglass as her running mate. Frederick Douglass didn't want to run oh. on <laughs> with, um, with her, and yet that didn't stop her from claiming him as, as her running mate. Um, yeah, she's a fascinating character that she just claimed the right to run for office even even 50 years before women actually could vote. You know? so, so as we talk about National uh, Women's History Month, mm -hmm. uh, it's important that people like her are celebrated mm -hmm. because yeah. they might be names we don't know yeah. or, yeah. Or, or aren't familiar with. We're yeah. familiar with more current mm -hmm. issues and things yeah. that have taken place. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And so a lot of what I do in my classes actually is to highlight these folks like Victoria Woodhull. Um, I teach a class called Bad Girls in Early America and we talk about women. We have spent a whole week on Victoria right, Woodhull right. Uh, and, and the ways in which she tried to shake things up. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> nice Thanks. to see you. Likewise.